what does our hair say about us? Whether or not we realize it, our hair, or lack of hair, says a lot about who we are. The average woman in the U.S. will spend about $55,000 on her hair in her lifetime, and a recent poll states that 23% of women say they don't want to leave the house on a bad hair day. <laughs> Men in the U.S. spend nearly $1 billion annually on hair loss prevention and treatment. <laughs> Even two of history's most famous philosophers were concerned with hair loss. Both Aristotle and Hippocrates were known to create their own hair products in an attempt to treat their disappearing hairlines. As a hairstylist, I've always wondered about our emotional attachment to our hair as a part of our identity. And recently I had a client who was facing a difficult time in her life sit in my chair and ask for hair that told people not to talk to her. This stuck with me, and it inspired me to look deeper into the significance we place on our hair. I heard a story once about Native American men who were recruited during the Vietnam War, and when their heads were shaved, they lost their tracking abilities. Now, I found this story referenced all over the internet. I couldn't confirm it as true, but I believe it, because as someone who's worn my hair long for most of my life, I've had some haircuts that have left me feeling like I'm missing a limb. Cultural beliefs about our hair and how it can affect us go back as far as recorded history. And many ancient cultures believe there is power in uncut hair. And that because it is the most elevated part of the body, it acts as a conduit for gods and spirits to reach the soul. <coughs> Native Americans, for example, traditionally wore their hair long, as it was seen as a physical extension of thought and attributed to their keen sense of intuition and their connection to Mother Earth. The way in which they cared for their hair was a symbolic ritual. Combing represented the alignment of thought, braiding the oneness of thought, and tying the securing of thought. During times of war, they would braid a lock of their loved one's hair into their warrior cloth for luck, and after the death of a loved one, they would shave their heads as a symbol of loss and grief. <coughs> This practice of head shaving, known as tonsure, is practiced all over the world and dates back to the 14th century. In many religions, including Buddhism and Catholicism, tonsure is a symbol of humility and of one's seeking enlightenment by ridding themselves of their ego. Jain monks practice tonsure as a way of renouncing their worldly lives and entering the monkhood, and they do so by plucking their hairs out one by one. In India, tantra is practiced on young children during a ceremony known as mundan. It is believed that the shaving of a child's first hairs will purify the spirit and rid them of the evil eye or negative energy. Both men and women in India will shave their heads multiple times throughout their lifetime. In their culture, hair is a symbol of vanity and is sacrificed to the gods as a sign of devotion. That hair that was donated is then sold and used to make wigs and extensions. Hair is one of India's largest exports, bringing in $400 million annually. And the global market is estimated to reach $10 billion by 2023. Now while monks, religious deities, and people in India shave their heads, the rest of the world views hair a little differently. In both traditional southern China, and in Africa, it's common for women to wear their hair up, down, or braided in a particular way as a way of representing their social, marital status, or their spirituality. In the Ayurvedic system, it's customary for men to wear a rishi knot, or as you might recognize it, the man bun. <laughs> the hair is seen as an extension of the etheric spine and is worn tied in a knot at the crown of the head. It is believed that this allows one to harness solar energy or prana as a means to increase vitality and intuition. In the Bible, we have the story of Samson and Delilah. It was believed that Samson's hair was the source of his supernatural power, and when his lover Delilah betrayed him by cutting his hair in his sleep, Samson's power was lost. Following suit in the beliefs of Judaism, Nazarites and Rastafarians wear their hair long and in natural braids or dreads. Dreads are seen as a symbol of power and of nonconformity. 
Congresswoman Ayanna Presley saw her braids as a political statement and took pride in embracing her natural hair texture in a culture that shames African Americans for their hair and teaches them that silky straight hair is good hair. Ayanna Presley then had to learn how to um, embrace her new identity when she was diagnosed with alopecia and lost her influential braids. <coughs> In addition to being a religious and political statement, certain hairstyles have a lasting impression in pop culture. We're all familiar with the famous hairstyles of stars like Farrah Fawcett, Stevie Nicks, James Dean, and of course, David Bowie's iconic mullet. <laughs> the mullet is an especially popular haircut here with our ski culture. <laughs> Archaeological evidence suggests this cut may have originated in ancient civilizations like Mesopotamia and Syria as a way for people to keep their necks warm and vision unobstructed. <laughs> And in 2010, I ran banned mullets, claiming it was part of Western cultural invasion. <laughs> Needless to say, hair is a form of self-expression. And for many of us, our hair is a big part of our identity. So what I'd like you to take away from this is if your hair were to say something about you, what would you want that message to be? Thank you. <laughs>